Welcome back, everybody. Today we have special guest, Deadpool. And we're going to talk about our trade wars with Pac-Man Case. Deadpool, what do you think about Pac-Man Case? You? Holy I'll be a tensor. Huh. That's not very Canadian of you. Wow. That's, wow. that's a lot. That's coming from Deadpool, not from us. We're sorry, eh? Very sorry. Hey guys, welcome back to Trade Wars. I know what you're thinking. We held our cards back quite a bit. Well, there was a reason for that. A little bit of strategy. It's strategy. You don't want to give the enemy a heads up to where your location is, so you don't want to tell them what you actually got. Today, that's this video. We're going to tell you what we actually acquired, and I'll tell you this much. We turned $20 into almost $700 worth of game profit. Here we go. We're going to show you these games, and where we're going to show you them is from uh, the standpoint of value. We'll go from the yeah. lowest valued game to the highest valued game. And first up is... First up is... What? Nah. Pac-Man. We're... No, we're not putting Pac-Man. I mean, we got it, but everything with Pac-Man sucks, sucks. And we don't want to lose. Yeah. So, get that out of here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to start off with the real games now. All right. So, on this stack, we had $150 in cash to play with. We did have about $200 worth of stuff, but we couldn't trade the other $50 worth. So instead of including it, because it was a lot of Wii stuff, we just decided to absorb that. We didn't include the 50. Yeah. So everything you're going to see here cost us 150 bucks. First up, Tomb Raider Anniversary Edition on the PS2. This one was a lot we picked up and it is about $15 in Canadian value. Next up, we have GameCube. GameCube. Peter Jackson's King Kong on the GameCube. This game goes for about $20. Complete. Uh, yeah, complete. Complete in box. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a bad purchase. Again, super, super cheap. Scott, you want to talk about the next one? I, can't, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to try it. I don't even know what the hell it is. <laughs> Asterix and Oblix Kick Buttocks. That's a mouthful of fix. Yeah. This one's a bit of a sleeper. It's more of a kid's game, but yep. from what I gathered, it was pretty good. And I was shocked to see that this one is valued at $25. And it is minty on yeah, the inside. It's like, absolutely minty, but... Um, doesn't but... look like it was barely ever played. Another game that has gone up quite significantly uh, for obvious reasons. Def Jam Icon the for PS3. the PS3. Everything on PS3 has gone up recently. The prices there are a little bit volatile, so we have priced them on the lower end of the scale. Yeah. And this one says it goes for about $35. The next one we picked up when we were in Oromocto. Uh, gas station. At the gas station. Now we <laughs> held this back a little bit. Scott hummed and hawed about keeping a few of these, but you know oh, what? Yeah. At the end of the day, we want to win this goddamn competition. <laughs> Armored Core Verdict Day. It goes for $35 on the low end and apparently a really, really good game. Hopefully we get to play it. Hopefully we get to keep it. Let you guys decide on that. I don't have that one in my collection. The next five I am going to let you talk about. I'll pass them to you. I did the first good. five. We'll let you do the heavy hitters. All right, this one's a weird one because we couldn't sell it in town to our local pawn shops. As soon as they seen sports game, they're like, we're not interested. Yeah. Didn't even look up the value. So this is the NCAA uh, College Hoops 2K7, and it's still got this plastic seal on it. We picked this up in Fredericton. For nothing. Yeah, like literally nothing because... I think it's a sports game, and you were shocked when you looked it up that yes, it brand goes new. For. It goes for fifty-five. We took fifteen dollars off of this because so there's a hole in, the, a seal hole in the seal. Right now here. it is still sealed, but it yeah. is not. The plastic is not complete. So, like I said, those prices are volatile. Yep. We decided to do the fair thing. We took fifteen dollars off, so we said this was forty. We're gambling, kind of on this, yeah. but it's like a sleeper, like hardcore. What exactly. do you guys think? 
just another sports game or was it worth putting it in the pile? On a 360, we have Fist of the North Star Kins Rage 2. This is uh, pretty rare to find around yes. here at all. I've never another seen it. Another $40 game. Never seen it in Moncton. I had the first one. I don't have this one. No. <laughs> another one of those ones. Hopefully. Got it at the same gas station yeah. that had a video game and movie rental place. And then they had a rack of like stuff they were selling for two for $19.99. Yes. So 10 bucks and it's worth 40. All right, you guys know how much we love our survival horror. So we have Silent Hill Downpour. Yep. Now I know the PS3 version goes for more, but this one goes for what? 50. 50 bucks now. 50 bucks. It's steadily climbing. I've yeah. been watching it there for a year and a half. And oh I yeah. Hummed and hawed. And it just keeps going up slowly. But I think in the next five years, we'll see this one really go up. It might. Because all those Resident Evil and Silent Hill games tend to go up in value. They, yeah, they do. So here's hoping. We have... Nightshade on the PS2. And the reason why I got this is because I watched uh, Lightsaber Samurai. And he was talking about games that are shooting up in value. Yes. And we were lucky because it has shot up in value as far as online yeah 75 dollars we picked this up for not, like half the price half the if, price mm, yeah, yeah at like our local pawn shop so they i know it was sitting on the rack for a while because yeah. i had seen it for a while and then when i seen his video i was like oh crap i wonder if they still have that there and yeah. i went there and it still had it. awesome i said i think that might be a good pick to put in the lot hopefully it's yes. recognizable because that's what we're kind of going for here. We wanted to pick up games that weren't just filler for your collection. Yeah, we, we want games that people are going I mean, to want. We had, I could have bought two well, $150 worth of $5 games. You know, there, I would have had a big stack. But, but I'm we looking felt like for. This was the yeah. Quality over quantity. Quality over quantity and the shipping costs. And the shipping costs. <laughs> so last but not least in this little lot, we have the Zelda Ocarina of Time. It is the Master Quest edition. This was the only one we're missing. So get hope we get I hope to we keep, keep it. it. Yeah, because I have all the other Zeldas on the GameCube. Yeah. This was the only one and it is in amazing shape. Oh yes, and it, it goes is. for like 90 to $100. Yes. So there that is. Uh, yeah, we're pretty happy about it. We we hope it stays. I'm just saying, vote Retro Rivals if you want to. <laughs> Don't take my games from me, people. Don't take our games. So the last game we have here, uh, we end it up. This was also found at that same Schultz gas Normacca. station and we we walked in there only because you need to use a washroom only because I need to use so a washroom we got lucky yeah shadow of the damned but at 10 bucks at 10 bucks we're not adding it in and the reason why is you sold your painting we sold the painting we traded the painting exactly so through the magic of editing and time you guys are going to see what we traded for the Bowser painting. It's a beautiful sunny day in Moncton, New Brunswick. A little bit windy, but it is Tuesday, May 25th. And we just filmed our video wrapping up uh, for Trade Wars yesterday. And the things we were waiting on are already in the mail. So we're going down to the mailbox. All right, just got this bad boy from the mailbox. We're gonna open it upside down because, well, all the uh, the good stuff's on the other side there, so. Ugh. I'm gonna end up cutting something. I just know it, maybe myself. So I did indeed cut a little bit of the paper. Oh, Lord. Let's see what we have. No. Hey Retro Rivals, thanks for doing this trade with us. We watch your channel all the time. Hopefully this helps you win the trade war. We threw in a Canadian cover variant of MLB2, the show for PS Vito. Wow! We thought it seemed fitting as we are both Canadian gamers. We stumbled into a lot of these sealed along our game hunt journey. 
Cohen our six-year-old dreams of being a video game streamer and is obsessed with Mario and Bowser. We can't wait for his surprise. Oh, that is so cool. That was unexpected. So here's what we got. A sealed MLB2 The Show. Splatter House for the PS3. Shadow of the Damned for the PS3. Holy minty Batman. And we've got Yakuza Dead Souls. So guys, what you're seeing in front of you is our complete collection for the Trade Wars. What do you think? Almost $700 worth of games. I feel like we might have a good shot at this, but we're trying to stay humble. So let's see what Pac-Man has. So now we're gonna give you the deets on how everything is going to go down. We're putting out this video today as you're seeing it. We're also putting out a community post on both channels where you can vote who won Trade Wars. After that, you're going to have an entire week to vote. You can vote on our channel. You can vote on Pac-Man cases. We'll, co we'll combine all those totals. You have till midnight on the 5th to vote at Eastern Standard Time. On the 6th, we'll be live streaming with Pac-Man case and the two channels, which are secret right now, the two channels we're nominating to take on the next month of Trade Wars. So you'll get to see that there too. That'll be on our channel at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, June 6th. We hope to see you there. We hope you like what we showed you today and we hope you vote Retro Rivals. And as we always say at the end, game on.